Okay, the, the question here is to find the coordinates of the centroid of the solid. <coughs> so here's the actual area. We're looking at this area here. And what we're doing is we're taking that area and then you're rotating that area about the y axis. So <coughs> In, in this axis is what we call as the axis of revolution, which means <coughs> you're going to take this here and the whole thing rotates about this and as a process, in the, in the process it's going to create a solid. So <coughs> these kind of solids they have particular axis and <coughs> any point like on this side with a certain distance here from the axis there's going to be a mirror image of that point on the other end and when you pass a section along the z along the y axis then <coughs> the cross section is going to look like a circle so <coughs> these solids are known as solids of revolution. That means they are created by revolving a certain amount of area about a given line. I mean the line could be an axis but in general it has to be a line and <coughs> when you are rotating it you are going to maintain the distance of every point the same as when you move this around that axis. Now, <coughs> so <coughs> when, when you follow this process then <coughs> this axis is not only an axis of evolution, it also is, I mean this kind of solids they have <coughs> what we call as a radial symmetry. I mean, any plane which passes through this axis will divide the solid into half. I mean, if I take a plane here at this point, then <coughs> this plane is going to divide the solid exactly into half, and <coughs> everything on the one side of the plane will be a mirror image of the other side of the plane. So. <coughs> Since we have a little symmetry, <coughs> the centroid of this solid has to be on y-axis. I mean, that's all the conclusion is that because the way the solid is generated and <coughs> this axis in axis of evolution plus you have the radial symmetry, your <coughs> centroid of this solid is going to be somewhere on here. Now if we have a point on y axis then we can automatically conclude that the x coordinate or the x bar and the z coordinate those two have to go to zero. So that's one conclusion that <coughs> the three coordinates which you were looking for that means x bar, y bar and z bar the <coughs> x coordinate and the z coordinate will be zero. The only thing we need to worry about is the y coordinate. <coughs> and we know the equation for y coordinate is <coughs> you need the volume integral with the dv, then you need the volume integral y tilde and dv. That's the only one equation we need to work with. <coughs> so to find those two more integrations
this is y axis at z axis so how you think you're gonna find the volume I mean that part is from calculus, right? So how do you find the volume of the solid? <coughs> There's one more dimension here. It should go from here to here as four meters. <coughs> so how do you find the volume? It's the same thing. See, you take a small, let's say, element. Let's say if I pick an element at <coughs> a distance of y <coughs> with the thickness of dy. Now, this element, which looks like an area, is really a disk. I mean, if you look through this axis, or if you look through this direction, what you're going to see will be a circular disk and all you're going to see is, is cross section and <coughs> you're going to take this height as c <coughs> which means the radius of this disk is going to be c so you're looking at a disk which has a radius of c and it has a thickness of dy <coughs> which means the volume for the disk will be pi z square that this area multiplied by the thickness that is dy. <coughs> so that gives you the volume for the disk we're working with. Then we also need coordinates. We need x tilde y tilde and z tilde. These are the coordinates of the centroid of that disk. Now, <coughs> being a disk, the centroid is going to be located right at the middle of this. <coughs> so, being in the middle, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, this one here will be y plus <coughs> dy over 2. And again, <coughs> since dy is approaching zero, you could drop this, and I could take this approximately as y. <coughs> so, <coughs> total volume is the volume integral dv, and <coughs> that's going to be pi c square dy. And <coughs> we're looking at the limit which means you have to go from y equals to 0 and <coughs> you go all the way up to y equals to 4. So this is from 0 to 4. Now z square, see, you're, in, if you're integrating in dy or with respect to y, that means this whole thing has to be a function of y. And that's the only way you can integrate. So <coughs> we also know that z square is 4y. So you make that replacement and you go with <coughs> dy. So you get 4 pi, then you have y dy is going to be <coughs> y squared over 2 from 0 to 4. <coughs> and that should be 16 and then 16 is 8, so 32 pi. Okay, that gives us the <coughs> area, I'm sorry, the volume. The next integration we're looking for is this one. <coughs> so we got <coughs> integral y tilde dv. <coughs> then y tilde, we just found out that's going to be y dv we already know that's pi 
the square b y. <coughs> so this is going to be an integration. We take pi r of this. Then we have y by itself. C is 4y and dy. So <coughs> you got so 4 comes out of this again. You have 4 pi. Y and y becomes y square dy. <coughs> You're looking into limits from 0 to 4. So this will be 4 pi. That's going to be y square. So that will be y cube over 3 between 0 and 4. So <coughs> that's 4 and 4 16 times 4 64 times 4. That's 256 pi over 3. means the coordinate y bar. That should be 256 pi over 3 and <coughs> 32 pi. Now this gets cancelled from here. This will be 8. So you get 83. And since it was in meters, so it will be 8 third meters. <coughs> Any questions?